listening to the Silken Community Podcast. Your favorite source for gaming, film, and internet debate starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the season six premiere of the Soken Podcast. Don't worry, we weren't lost forever in quarantine. We did find our way back. I'm your host, T, and with me are Jace and Leo. Drayson. Jace Drayson. In the hell here, I'm Leo. All right, so it's been a couple of months since we all got together and since we recorded one of these. So how has everyone been holding up in our... Uh, government-imposed exile. I'm less... By the way, no one pointed out that I rebranded this season. Thanks for noticing. Anyways, um, the quarantine for me has been less quarantine than it was when we left. I've been working every day and being out and about doing my job. Um, all of the fun stuff is still off the table, so that pretty much sucks. But, you know, not a whole lot has changed other than that. It feels a little bit more like regular life just because, you know, working. I've said this before and I will continue to say it, but I have been living my best life here in quarantine. 2020 has been, uh, let's say, one heck of a roller coaster of a year um, as far as the, the world is concerned. Um, but selfishly, I'm loving it. I am, I'm introverted. I hardly have to go outside anymore. I work from home now. In fact, my boss confirmed that even after all this quarantine stuff is done, I'll still be working from home, living the dream, ladies and gentlemen. So I've been enjoying it. That's so lucky. I've had, uh, I've had some ups and downs. We, uh, we got a dog. I don't know if we got the dog before the end of last season. We might've, but I got a dog. And uh, I also got DDoSed. Oh, oh no! How did that happen? Uh, so my, I so I didn't get DDoSed. My brother got DDoSed, but unfortunately, we live in the same house and share the same Wi-Fi. Um, so what happened is he plays Xbox online, um, and he plays competitively. Now, my brother is uh, about that that fifteen to sixteen year old range, so he actually wound up ticking off some people that he knew from school that then he also met through the xbox live scene and uh i don't know what exactly set them off but i do know for about three days we didn't have any internet and this kids is your daily lesson on try to be nice on the internet or if you're sorry i mean if you're gonna be mean at least use a vegan yeah yes um i this reminds me actually of a time uh we were playing uh what was the game um sea of thieves and dale (laughs) got into we were chasing another ship who had stolen a bunch of stuff off of ours and um they invited dale into their uh into their chat room because we were talking mad smack back and forth (laughs) And so he goes into their chat room and I don't know how they did it, but they figured out a way to DDoS him in the middle of us playing the game. And so he lost connection. We lost, you know, a member of our crew in the middle of a fight and ended up losing. Uh, but man, that's, it's kind of scary when that happens. Cause you're like, what, what else do they know? It's like, what other information do they have? Google yeah. knows all of my passwords. What do you know? Exactly. Yeah, kind of, stay off of... my browser history. <laughs> They'll only make that mistake once. What kind of puppy, T? Uh, he is a black lab Australian shepherd mix. Oh, I love Australian shepherds. Yeah, me we too. had one. Very smart. Danny. I will. Uh, I'll put a picture of him in the chat. We should. We should Twitter it too, so that we have some visual aids to go along with our um, podcast. For the uh, the YouTube version, got a pop up picture of a puppy. His most recent achievement is learning how fetch works, as opposed to the ever popular "Ooh, I want to play." No, you can't take my ball, but I want to play. No, you <laughs> can't take me with my this ball. ball. 
I only have one dog that will fetch. His name is Scamp. So, to kick us off this season, we'll be talking about the recently announced new Batman game, Gotham Knights. Uh, the mobile gaming struggle of Epic Games and Apple. And we'll be circling back to a topic from last season. The dreaded Last Airbender live action series. Ooh. Recently, Warner Brothers Games released a pretty unexpected teaser announcement for a new Batman game, and a lot of information has been springing up over the last week or so. We've got everything from villain speculation to heroes, and what else would there be, man? It's Batman! So, the world premiere trailer made people talk because it looks like the game is a direct continuation of the Arkham series, but it's apparently an original story and entirely aside from Arcana. However, that said, they did follow step one, and they did kill the Batman. Do you guys think the minor link stories will pull Arkham players, or will it be more likely to disappoint fans of the old series who are hoping to see a proper sequel? I have played, I believe, all of the Arkham games. And one of my favorite things about the Arkham games are the cameos of the Bat family. So the fact, you know, we get to play as Batman a lot. There's a lot of uh, of catalog out there of video gaming where you get to be Batman. There's much, much less catalog of you getting to be anyone else in Bat Family. I believe in the last game there are some some minor sections where you get to play as Catwoman, but and even maybe a, a scene or two where you play as Robin. But the, these games you're just solely focused on these uh side but major characters within the bat family and as a fan i couldn't be more excited i actually think it's um really really dope and i'm excited for it i would not be surprised however if the batman is not really dead and something happens before the end of the game and he's around yeah i'm um i'm not prone to voluntarily diving into console peasantry so um you know i haven't played him um the few times i have lately it's actually been for the sake of this podcast to play games i know we're going to talk about um i i know of the arkham games and um of course this game has made um it's made nerd headlines all over the place so i'm i'm aware of it um however i don't think the i don't think that the storyline or being a sequel um to the arkham series i don't think that is as essential to whether it will appeal to players or not i think it's largely irrelevant um fans of um, batman games i think are going to be attracted to play this it has a lot of similarities to some of the arkham games you know the the combat the um the visuals um they're all they're all very similar um of course it's next gen so it looks fantastic um so it it has a whole lot of appeal um to just fans of batman and that's going to be all the arkham players uh, and it's going to be i think a bunch of others as well you do know that arkham is available on steam right yes it is a console game that is going to be available on t and it's fine let me be curmudgeonly <laughs> It's the lousy merchant class that's trying to buy their way to nobility. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I detest it. All right. Well, in that case, let's talk about the heroes. Like we said, Batman is dead. Or appearing to be. It'll be seen later. But how well do you think a Batman game can hold up without the Batman in it? I think Jace has a really good point in that obviously in in batman themed games of course we're going to play batman a lot um but there is a whole cast of characters that are um supporting characters to batman but are very good characters in their own right um that people are finally going to have an opportunity to really explore in a game like this i think it's a cool thing um and i th i think that element of the story is going to make uh the gameplay that much more interesting cuz you get to you know, for, for each of these four characters, it's supposed to have a little bit of a different style and, you know, you get to adapt and adjust um, 
what you like and how you want to play it through. Um, I also suspect, you know, Batman's not really dead. Um, and, you know, you, we'll, we'll see how, how everything comes out. Um, but I, I think it could be a fantastic game, uh, even if you're not playing The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight Rises. So it's, it's, it's a comic book trope that whenever a character is dead, they're either not really dead or they're gonna come back in which how it's very rare that someone in comic book universe dies and stays dead i i know that's not the question but i just had to put it out there uh, i think the game can hold up very well without batman i do want to go on record and have gone on record in my real life many many times i don't like games or, or sorry i don't like stories from a mythology that that leave out the main myth for instance the television program known as gotham that was just about basically the gotham pd um with it, it had batman as a young man like a child young man and kind of growing into his batmanness but there was no batman in that show um there's a show that kind of focuses on alfred i believe it's called pennyworth also not a lot of batman in pennyworth it's really focusing more on alfred when he was a young man i'm not a huge fan of those things I, if 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 i want to watch batman i want to watch batman i am relatively excited for this particular game however just because of how fanatic fanatical i am about the 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 comics and, and the characters and i've i've always been a huge fan of the bat family i, I love that batman is such a cold hard you know broken human but then always surrounds himself with just different people that want to put on his cowl and there's drama there of course as as in all families but i i do think that there's enough story and enough richness in those relationships for the game story to be compelling especially because it's it's going to have like the the specter of batman his ghost in a way that, that they're all there are some comic book tales that kind of go from this angle too and they're really good stories um they're not as big as batman we all know that but i still think that the game's gonna come off really well i find in in a lot of in a lot of different iterations though um i i do agree it is is disappointing on some level if the um the focal point of mythology um it, you know isn't a main player in a story that's just kind of in that setting but i i also think that 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 can be if it's well told it can be a very refreshing story and it can be really interesting to even get the opportunity to, to explore characters who are otherwise side characters like robin for instance like he's gonna get to be a hero you know as opposed to a sidekick so i don't know i think there's it, it, if it's done well, it can be fantastic and, and a really good way to explore some of those other folks. Well, <laughs> not to take issue, but Robin is not a sidekick. Robin has been my main squeeze for quite some time since I was a very <laughs> young teenager. That's fair. Uh, I collected his book that was just called Robin. He actually um, does lead the Teen Titans. I don't want you to forget about that. So, you know, he had sidekicks himself. Let's not disparage the name of my boo. <laughs> hey, and I'll tell you this too. I Like Krypton. You ever heard of Krypton, that TV show Krypton? It's like about Superman's grandpa or something. Like, I don't want to know that. I, I get it. You can tell stories around the universe, I guess, that I'm just sick and tired of, like, prequels, I guess. I, I don't – why can't we just push a story forward and and see what's next? I did like Batman Beyond, which still had Bruce Wayne in it, but he's too old and decrepit and focused on Terry, whatever Terry's last name is, as, yes. as the Batman – there you go, as the Batman Beyond – um, that was compelling to me, but it's because they went forward in time. I think that there's something about going backwards to me. Since we know where the story ends, it it traps my brain. There's talk. Oh God, here we go. Star Wars alert. There's talk of there being no! a Kylo, <laughs> a Kylo Ren movie, perhaps series coming out. And I'm like, why? We already know what happens to Kylo. We already know how this ends. Don't make us suffer through his telling. Anyways, that was a soapbox, and I'll let us move on. All right, guys, we didn't even make it one segment into the new season before we had to ruin, <laughs> it's Star ruined Wars. Our... <laughs> I guess I have to put a quarter in the jar. Oh, God, you're going to be broke. We're all going to be broke. All right. Well, let's talk about the heroes that we did see. So the trailer shows us um, known by their hero names and costumes, right? So we have Robin, we have Nightwing, we have the Red Hood, and we have Batgirl. 
Now, the characters that are wearing each of those cowls is we have, because uh, Dick Grayson and Jason Todd were both Robin at one point. Uh, Dick Grayson is Nightwing, Jason Todd is Red Hood, and Tim Drake is our current Robin. Uh, and then that is Barbara Gordon as Batgirl. So each character seems to have their own unique playstyle and different kinds of weapons, but in several instances, we see them on screen at the same time. Do you think the game will give you the choice of who you play as? And if so, which one do you see yourself playing? I, mean, I think I've already been pretty clear I'm going to be amboying Robin. Um, I, I think I, I actually read a little bit. I believe you, you can co-op on the game, but only with two people at a time. I don't think you can have all four characters playing co-op at the same time, at least from what I read. And this is really still in a development phase, so I don't know what's what. I would love it if you could get together with four folks, four buddies, and put the Bat family, you know, can tail in the streets of Gotham. That'd be super fun. Um, but I, I, from what I read, I think the game only you go up two, two at a time. It won't have screen either. Yeah, the I I watched a um like a developer diary on it, and that's what um that was what they said. Of course, still in development, it could change. So you either you you choose one of the four to play, and you will either have a bot of one of the other four with you, or that'll be another player co-oping with you. And depending on you know depending on who you're playing as um as as i said earlier like it they're going to be different play styles and some of it went through that like um batgirl has kind of the more traditional batman like um uh like kit. say again but the more traditional batman kit yes like the like her movement methods are similar to the the way batman does with his um grappling hook gun and like she she pulls out wings to kind of glide whereas some of the other ones were like i don't know one was a they they use satellites to teleport themselves to different places um that was kind of interesting but yeah all and, and different fighting styles different all that um and the the two characters interact with each other um so i saw like kind of a funny moment where um uh the developer was playing his back girl and i think it was robin with her and uh she slipped and fell down a down a slide that was like a you know a, a piece of broken um whatever ice um and i couldn't think of the word ice <laughs> uh, she slides down and when she lands she was like uh if anybody asks i meant to do that and robin's like got it <laughs> And it's like that kind of funny, you know, interaction between the characters, depending on their relationships, depending on their histories that um, I think could add a fun element to the game, too. I'm actually, are we 100% sure it's Tim Drake, Robin, and not Damian Wayne, Robin? Are we, is that confirmed? I did, I, the trailer I watched, you really couldn't tell. He looked Tim Drake, -y, he was techy, like Tim Drake is techy, but I wasn't sure. I do think he is Tim Drake because there was that flash in the trailer of um, someone in a red cloak. And I think that's Red Robin. Well, Red Robin is Tim Drake. Yes. Red Robin has delicious burgers, by the way. Yum. We are not sponsored, but we could be. By Red Robin, man, that would be fantastic. All right. Uh, so I think it's I think it's Tim Drake. I'd like to be Damian Wayne. He's a terror, and I love him. Yeah, he's a little terror. Uh, Tim Tim Drake was my favorite Robin just because that's when I was. I think I was a lot a, the same age as Tim Drake when Tim Drake came out in the in the comic book. So, like you know, as a young adolescent, I saw myself in the role. All right. Syl has said that it is 100% confirmed that it is Tim Drake, and also like to disagree with you. He says Dick Grayson is best. He cannot change. He just mind. Dick Grayson is the best Nightwing. <laughs> yes. Now on to the villains of the story. The primary antagonists and the bit at that end of the trailer are the Court of Owls, which have been a fan favorite in the comics, but are otherwise considered small game in mainstream media, especially compared to the more classical rogues gallery. So far, no other villains besides Mr. Freeze have been officially confirmed, but do you think that we'll see more of our former foes? And if so, which ones are you hoping for? 
I think we we definitely are. Um, in the teaser trailer that came out, saw Mr. Freeze, um, and I I think the just the way video games are structured, there's going to be you know, uh, and an, not an arch villain, but certainly a villain to fight to you know come to this area of the game, and then there's going to be another one to fight to come to the other area of the game, and you know at some point you're gonna, you're gonna fight the Court of Owls. And then Batman will be revealed to not be dead. So there's, um, but uh, what who those are going to be? I mean, I think of course there's going to be the uh, the the classic lineup. Uh, we see Mister Freeze. Uh, I I think it, a Batman game isn't a Batman game without Joker somewhere. Um, and then of course, I mean I'm more familiar with the far more mainstream ones, but Scarecrow and the Riddler and Penguin and them. I, it half the fun of Batman is the rogues gallery, so it just doesn't seem like they can get through it without having at least cameos, if not making those, you know, in level bosses or something like that, for lack of a better term. So I imagine we'll see the, we'll we'll run the gamut of several of them. I am sure. I am always partial to the the chick villains, Catwoman, who okay, sometimes you could say antihero, whatever, but uh, Ivy, um, oh come on. Talia, you know, I like, I really like those when it's the, the femme fatale type villain. So I'm hoping to see a lot of those. I, I will say, Port of Owls should be much more mainstream because they are. It's a very cool concept. The problem with the Court of Owls is there's not a singular character necessarily that ha that gets a flash in the pan for you to really kind of focus on. So it's really much more of a cabal. But um, I did not read the Night of Owls, which was um, I, like the early early 2010s i believe that came out um when it when it was in first run but i i read it through in one night on my ipad when i was updating my dc and and man they're they, that's a cool villain group and I'm, I'm really excited to see them in a in a video game another reason it's cool is because in that comic book run one of the main pulls was that you know batman sent out a call for help for the full bat family so like even birds of prey and selena kyle all of them came to to stand up against the court of owls in night of night of the owls or whatever it was called so it, it's fitting i'm wondering if they're going to riff off of that storyline definitely always a fan of more catwoman gotham knights has no official release as of yet but it is set to come out in 2021 more details are sure to come out over the course of this year so keep an eye out for updates if you're interested in getting back to gotham if dc is an interest literally two days before this recording DC released another game trailer, this one for a Suicide Squad game that we'll be covering next week. If you're not aware of the business and law side of the gaming industry, Epic Games, creators of Fortnite, and Apple, the company we'd kind of be shocked if you weren't familiar with by now, are currently in a battle over an antitrust lawsuit filed by Epic. To put it as simply as we can, Apple has a policy for in-app purchases in which they take a 30% cut of the profits. Epic put in a way for users to bypass that system in their mobile version of, of Fortnite, which caused Apple to remove the app from their store. Epic then sued Apple for it. So the whole issue initially stems from the 30% cut Apple takes for in-app purchases, which, keep in mind, are the only way a free game like Fortnite makes any revenue at all. Do you think they're justified in taking that kind of cut? Uh, justified is such a weird word um, in a situation like this, given that uh, they're going to take a cut that's going to make it attractive for both them and the product or the producers of that product to put it on their um their outlet um apple does afford a, a significantly larger audience um to the producers of whatever content there is so it isn't as if apple isn't adding any value whether that value is worth 30 percent that's going to be negotiated between between those two parties involved um, and there are some instances where apple doesn't take 30 percent from from some uh, from some folks my understanding is that they they are pretty standard 
as far as video games are concerned um they, they don't make exceptions for them but for like uh, books and you know other other modes of entertainment they they have and those have been negotiated and they came to you know a sound um arrangement that they both felt was good for them this i don't i don't know justified's a weird word it's weird because you know you're talking about a company worth billions versus a company worth trillions and it's like we're not really talking about anything just to begin with there's a, there's injustice just in the the existence of this type of corporate looting but neither here nor there in 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 the end you know it is worth noting that there was a no negotiation epic did try to get an exception to their deal obviously they didn't so they had a contract and epic is in breach uh, there's probably a, a a can of worms being opened uh in in the court of law re regarding whether or not apple has a monopoly monopoly or there's you know antitrust issues but ultimately the 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 cut and dry of it is when you have a company in breach there it's probably not going to go well for them so in that case you do think it's well within app right to remove them from the app store well that's the contract if you sign a contract you get your you're beholden to it i understand that there there are larger questions than that there is does apple have a monopoly i i probably have a problem with the infrastructure being owned by corporate conglomerates we're talking about the internet here we there are some things that are going to have to change i'm a huge net neutrality guy i don't think that conglomerates should be able to own enormous swaths of uh, virtual highway and say if you want to drive on my highway pay the piper that there's something innately wrong in that so we've we've got a lot of work to do legislatively to figure out this sign of kind of new landscape of of real estate of virtual real estate that said epic games in order to have their game on the platform signed a contract the contract was very clear and epic breached it by what they did with the the latest patch it's an interesting position um i've i've tried to wrap my head around it and i've tried watching smarter people than me try to explain it to dumber people like me um and i i still don't think i have a full understanding to appreciate all the nuances that are at play here um but uh there, there there was a general sense from the stuff i've read and the stuff i've watched that like this almost seems like the lawsuit was the plan right uh yeah it, that like it happened so quick um epic you know made the change they kind of knew what apple was gonna do uh and then bam drop drop the lawsuit um so I, who has standing in this i don't I have no idea um the courts will 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 play that out or it will play out in the courts um and it'll be really interesting to see where things go i i'm, I'm also 100 percent on board I'm, I'm a huge net neutrality guy i'm i hate the monopolies that have come up particularly in our online spaces um and i'd i'd very much like to see them reduced or removed apple is um, let's say it's been their MO to to monopolize things. Everything from the charging cords for their devices to, you know, you, you can only use stuff from their app store on their devices. Like, they have attempted to grasp a hold of everything they can. Epic's no better, though. Yeah, I mean, they've done very similar things just on a much smaller scale but because they're all a company and don't have the reach. I, I tend to agree that the lawsuit was the plan. I think that I was watching the stream on Twitter. That actually, there was a court case that happened today just a few hours ago as of the recording. And I was watching the Twitter stream happen uh, with somebody who's in the courtroom. And what kept coming up and I thought was very interesting is that, you know, Apple is focusing solely on this contract, which is their, the smart thing to do. And anytime anything about monopoly or antitrust, anti-competitive behavior comes up, they they run from that line of, of talk. Because ultimately, I, with this coming up, we are now going into the territory where the courts are going to have to start talking about what does it mean to be a conglomerate in an era where the internet and the infrastructure of the internet and virtual real estate is integral to our lives. Nothing. 
the pandemic made that abundantly clear that yeah. the internet is a so a, a social space a business space a uh, you know a, a shared space where we we have to have it to get work done it's it's probably saved lives by allowing a lot of people to stay home and work so it's it's more than just a utility it's almost like becoming a human right issue at this point yeah. so it could be that this is the beginning in the cracks in some of these conglomerates that could work its way up to the supreme court and really see some things change over the next years in one of their lawsuits to give it a little bit more context epic games stated that quote apple is engaging in anti-competitive behavior and monopolistic practices through its app store end quote part of the argument also stems from apple allegedly holding the unreal engine hostage according to epic by withholding technology from developers this is all alleged of course but while many have sided with either company, no official court ruling has been handed down as of yet. If it is true, however, do you think that we'll see other game developers throw in with Epic? I believe they already have. If I'm yeah. not mistaken, Microsoft already jumped in with Epic or, or, or offered a letter of support or something like that. I think they'd be dumb not to. Um, you know, the, the idea of monopolizing this stuff, as I said, it, it is Apple's MO. Um, I also think it's remarkably hypocritical for Epic to call anybody else anti-competitive with their uh, their practices about um, paying uh, developers enough to have uh, sole custody of their games on their um, on their platform uh, and not being competitive with other game platforms like Steam. Um, so. It, I'm I'm honestly not fond of either of these companies involved. It's very hard for me to take a side because I don't like either. Because the Unreal Engine is kind of hot in the tug of war of this, uh, from what I was watching in the case today, um, it seems like the judge is more inclined to offer a temporary restraining order on the, the, the pieces of the case that do pertain to the Unreal Engine so that the, the other developers and games that use the engine will not be held hostage in the midst of this however it will not extend to, to epic games so that most likely fortnite won't be back on the platform until the the case goes to court which i believe is you know they were they they asked both sides what how far away um when can you be ready for court and like epic was saying you know four to six months apple was saying 10 months we're looking at a really long drawn out fight uh and it could be unless a deal is is made you know spider-man's back in the mcu so anything can happen um, unless a deal is made, it doesn't look like Fortnite's going to be back on the Apple Store. Court cases take a while. Well, they can, especially when you are a billion or trillion dollar company that will hire teams of lawyers to specifically draw something out and make it unattractive for the other side. Um, yeah, it's going to be going to be a while. Didn't um, Fortnite's been taken off of Google Google Play, or it was taken off as well, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah, it seems that like this is this is already bigger than just Epic Apple. Um, it's it's going to be, I think, much bigger. And I'm kind of hoping that it'll set that precedent. I'm kind of hoping that um, you know we we start looking at these huge conglomerates as the monopolies they are. And 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 I do hope some action is taken. I mean we. The U.S. government has split up monopolies. Like, you know, no no choice about it. You're now three different companies. <laughs> like, and it, maybe that's what has to happen. That seems heavy-handed, but maybe that is what has to happen. Uh, some are speculating that this could pave the way for free market stores on mobile devices. Do you think that that's something that is possible? <laughs> you know, anything's possible. But I I have my doubt because of the amount of money that is at stake big names in in tech do not want that uh, you know as much as they say they want free marketing you know we're all for deregulation because that's the no they, they don't want that they they want a corner on, on the market they want to be able to do what they want to charge and you know 30 percent seems like a lot to me i know that it's relatively standard across a lot of platforms but you know that just takes a huge bite out of developers and creative people who are actually putting blood sweat tears and 
energy and emotion into the thing just to simply click a button and put it in the in the highway and, and i do have a problem with that i don't think that is free market it's in fact it it breaks a free market when you've got people controlling the gateways to products um so i actually think that um not only is it possible to you know create a situation where you know you you allow you allow a little bit more of a free market um uh, some are currently doing it uh it's possible to you know go outside uh you know the approved marketplace on an android um there are some challenges with it though um one of the things that i'd heard i don't have an android but uh that if you go outside you get like pop-ups and warnings and stuff as you're doing it like this isn't approved this isn't guaranteed safe um and for somebody who is confident and knows what they're doing they're going to go ahead and you know download what they want someone who isn't your average user could be intimidated by that and will simply say no i'm going to stick with the approved thing so i do think unfortunately even if it becomes government mandated that you know there has to be this open market i think um the very smart people that are at these billion and trillion dollar companies are going to figure out ways to still kind of funnel people toward the the products that they want that they make the most off of and toward their own you know approved markets through manipulation um or let's say influence I don't mind influence. I think that if we are left as consumers with choice, we are left with the power of our dollar bill to decide how the market goes, then so be it. And people who have good products, usually those are people with the money to back it up, people that have quality products, people that have consistent service generally or how it should be, I guess, is where where dollar bills flow because that's where the consumers naturally go. That's one of the beauties of free market or, or we hope it is. But when when you have you know a bouncer at the door saying you know unless you have on your apple hat you can't come into the the bar and you're limiting access to consumers based on uh on on power or just the fact that you have the ultimate say and authority over your platform or your your space whatever it, it is for that for that particular thing at that point it's i think it becomes monopolistic and and at that point we have broken the uh, the contract of what it means to do business in america no i i totally agree with you i think apple is probably one of the one of the worst companies in recent memory for those kinds of monopolistic practices not just in terms of software but even hardware like it's it's insane well even music I remember back in the day when like the the Apple's Apple Tunes iTunes or just came out you'd buy a, a see buy an album on there you couldn't even play the damn thing on yeah. anything other than yeah. the iTunes app like so I just bought an album like if you buy a CD you can play it in your car you can play it in your CD player you know that was the way music used to be no 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 now you've got this situation where you literally have to burn it into a completely different format even yeah. to get it to go anywhere else because they want you to use all of their proprietary stuff to listen to the music that you just bought that to me is not good business right um i think it is smart money making practices but it is definitely anti competitive and i and i agree i think it it goes against the spirit of capitalism in general the idea of a fair and open market place um it just doesn't exist when you have when you have groups who are so intent on creating those kinds of sole proprietorships and singular control over you know it it has to be played on an apple device it has to um you know it has to come through the apple store etc that said i mean i i honestly can't say anything better for epic in in their operations Um I remember one of the things I was most excited about when Epic announced after they had had the wild Fortnite success they had that they were going to launch a a gaming platform to rival Steam and I thought awesome this is going to be great but they didn't they didn't compete with Steam instead they bought out developers and just made them exclusive titles that you can only get on Epic and that was also anti-competitive um and I'm I'm not happy 
with the way they've they've come down. And there's other things Epic has done that I'm not a fan of. I remember back when we like one of the things that we talked about was Fortnite. I remember us all sitting here and going, "You played it? No. Have you played it? No. Do you think you will play it? Probably not." Who would have thought? We're still sitting here talking about Fortnite. Still talking about it. Yeah. Still not it, it is a phenomenon. It is. Blech. <laughs> well, the outcome of situations like this definitely have the potential to change entire industries. And this isn't particularly an exception. Whether it leads to Apple succeeding or to a free market or to Epic falling in line with Apple's demands, it's currently unclear. So you guys, you you know how it is. You're working with somebody, especially on like something important to you, whether it's a, a group project or a relationship or a massively successful TV show. And then you just, you wind up drifting apart. And you know, people split up, they go their different ways. They leave a project. They leave the live action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. Everything was fine until the creative differences attacked. It was recently reported that Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Knitzko had left the live action series, leaving the beloved franchise in the hands of Netflix. Before you ask your tea, congratulations on those names. Thank you. I yeah. looked it up. Man, that's really good. Set the bar low. That's my motto. Uh, also, Noting DiMartino and Kanitsko are likely better known as Bright, which is the name that the fandom has used, a combination of their first names in, you know, in line with like the shipping naming conventions because they work together on different projects. Oh, oh no, like Raylo. Yeah. Oh. A terrible example, but not false. So with Inepta's less than ideal history of live action adaptions, and less than ideal adaptations of Avatar The Last Airbender in terms of that movie that we don't speak of. Um, separation of the original creators of the series, those two things combined. Do you guys still have any hope for the show? Let me, let me state unequivocally, as the resident uh, cynic and <laughs> pessimist <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of, of this group here, uh, no, <laughs> um, there is a charm to Avatar: The Last Airbender um, that existed in its cartoon iteration, um, and that existed because of those creators and because of their vision for what they wanted the story to be. There are so many um, minute nuances that occur throughout the the lengthy series um, that. They do so much to either bring a care or bring a a viewer in, uh, or to create that sense of like real loss and like to really bring an emotional reaction from an audience that is not accidental. I don't think anything with Avatar: The Last Airbender was accidental, except for that abomination of a live action movie. Um, the fact that these folks were involved was the one thing that gave me hope. The fact that they're now gone, that's gone for me too. So, no. I, well, let's just be our, fall right into our stereotypes, but I, I do have hope. I'm, mainly because I think that the source material is fantastic. When you have fantastic sources, source material you certainly have potential for a great story and just because the creators aren't in it doesn't mean it can't be good dave filoni did not create star wars but he tells great star wars stories kevin feige did not create the heroes of the end of the marvel comic book series but he tells great stories about those heroes in the mcu it's completely possible with someone who loves the source material and respects it and understands it that we could be delivered a really fantastic ad adaptation i mean there are always questions because the medium was so perfect for what 
what Avatar The Last Airbender was. It's hard to imagine a live action version that really can capture, like Leo said, the charm of it. The, the, the way that it was drawn, the art direction, the the expressions of every character like that's that's going to be tough to do in live action but you know if you get somebody who loves that show and wants to translate it into live action in a way that honors it yeah i i really can still have hope that it can be good that is one of the things about you jace that i love the most is that optimism that unbridled hope um, we need it I love you too, and we need to have a name. Do we want to be Geo or Lace? Stop it. No. No. <laughs> so, it's an aside. Uh, Jason and I in our new guild, we're, we're two twins that are the leaders of the Divine Conclave. We we're trying to think of a name, and we, the best one was Dyad. And the only Dyad I've ever heard of is Raylo. And, ugh. But... <laughs> I want to point out Sorry. that makes uh, that makes two quarters in the jar for you. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, but we were talking about the name, and we had laughed about us being Raylo in in the guild. Anywho, sorry, that's an aside. Um, <laughs> I yeah, I I think the, the the bottom line just comes down to: Are you inclined to be hopeful or inclined not to? And 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 that's ultimately me. I'm just I'm not I'm not inclined to be hopeful. Um, I try to be, uh, but given that the, you know, it doesn't have to be the creator. I totally agree with you. Geniuses can come in, uh, behind other geniuses and continue to make something that they love work. Um, I think this is a little bit different than that because it is the adaptation of a work into a different medium. Uh, and I think a whole lot either needs to be translated by people who truly love it, or it needs to be, um, orchestrated by the visionaries that created it um if we can find someone who loves it uh and is going to honor it then it has a chance i'm just i'm not hopeful that those people exist and i think i think netflix doesn't have a, a goal zero batting average is that how you say it i don't know sports isn't necessarily on the, the lower but on all of and their... we're, we're the worst of sports yeah. <laughs> um, i don't know if they're bad for all their anime adaptations i don't i don't follow the anime but while um death note definitely a popular anime was really widely panned as a netflix adaptation um blade of the immortal was rather successful and rather loved on on netflix in its live action uh, adaptation so they have the potential to do it evidently if they've done it before i didn't watch either one of those so i'm not vouching don't even write me a letter about it but i'm saying in terms of what fans and critics liked, there, there's kind of a mixed bag there. They have also, it's worth noting, they've done really well with their big novel adaptations. Uh, the Umbrella Academy and yep, yep. Uh, The Old Guard have both done really well. Yep, yep. I liked Umbrella Academy way better than Old Guard, but Old Guard entertained me from beginning to end. Yeah, the same. I liked Umbrella Academy. There, In fact, because I tend to be so critical of stuff, my wife actually urged me to watch the Umbrella Academy. So we had a show to watch together. And I watched like the first episode and I was so hypercritical of it. She was like, What is wrong with you? How do you how do you hate everything? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I tried to look at it from the perspective of it can still be good and have flaws. And I think um, you know, that's a lot of netflix's stuff it's good but has flaws and it's just a matter of how overwhelming are those flaws um i'm hoping that you know we see better stuff come out of netflix and i don't know i wish that this would happen i'd love to see a live action last avatar that was good but i'm you know cynical I actually found a bingo card of uh like things that people expect to see from the live action adaptation and it's uh it's got boxes for things like bad cgi and oh man I, I watched just a clip of the original live action and it was a fight scene and i was reminded of just how terrible that movie was like it was just really bad worth saying in an instagram announcement from michael he stated Quote, Netflix's live action adaptation of Avatar has the potential to be good. It might be a show many of you end up enjoying. 
But what I can be certain about is that whatever vision ends up on screen, it will not be what Brian and I had envisioned or intended to make. End quote. Michael seems hopeful that the show will still have some merit, but it is definitely not his show. Do you think that Breik thinks that this show is doomed to fail? I think that's what's called a very political answer. <laughs> and he, he uh, you know, he still has the potential, I would imagine, to make money. And just because he's not the showrunner doesn't mean he doesn't have a stake. So he, it sounds to me like he was hedging his bets in a very diplomatic way. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing. It was a very professional answer. Um, it's kind of like, you know, the actor of a terrible movie still endorsing the movie because they want people to watch it because they have a stake in people watching it. Um, I don't know. Or it, it could just be he doesn't want to burn bridges in very influential circles. So I don't... And he could mean know. it. I mean, we could go the route that he's just being genuine, that whatever, you know, they could still make a good show, but it's just not the show that I would have made, obviously, because that's why they split up. That's why they they broke up. Their show wasn't what the suits wanted to see on screen for, for whatever reason. So, you know, he could just be genuinely saying what he said. He could. Sill has a good point, too. He said that um, it's essentially a professional courtesy in film uh, that you don't talk poop about other people's work, um, especially after you make deals with them. Uh, and that makes a good deal of sense. Every industry has their own culture. And if that's an aspect of film culture, it makes a good deal of sense because we see that across the board. Nobody, um, at least not often, people will talk poop about other people's work, at least publicly. I don't have it at hand, but I will say that the actor who plays Uncle Iroh was not excited about this parting of the ways and had um, he had great concern about the future of the program um, with the departure of the what did we call them bike 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 yeah I appreciate the way you say program Jace it reminds me of the Batman in the Lego Batman movie I like to be just a little you know I like to put my spin on it my stink on it. So, okay, but like on a scale of one to the Game of Thrones actors saying best season ever about their last se their last season, where are we at? I'm going to say that level. Um, <laughs> but I'm the cynic. I don't know. I mean, it's me. It does. It, you know, let me just be honest. It does read like a very diplomatic answer. It's not it doesn't sound like a. Uh, a very happy sentence. Sounds like somebody who's just trying to to be very vanilla, remain in the middle, and not make a strong stance, but also let people know that I'm still not very effing happy about what has occurred. So it's 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 pretty up there. Honestly, the reason that they're stated to have left is what worries me the most. Creative differences is the one thing I don't want these guys to have with the makers of this live action rep. A representation that that's the key to the whole thing in my opinion well, if they'd left over like a, a, you know a contract dispute or like i would be okay maybe there's hope but no this is exactly the thing i don't want there to be a disagreement on it's just a million different creative differences can mean a million different things though down to casting down to art direction down to you know like w at what point does it is the is the straw that breaks the camel's back the creators of the thing like if you choose the wrong or for the outfit if the the air the airbender doesn't wear orange and yellow now they want to put him in blue and green like what does that mean where's the break i think that there are certainly concern there but it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a death knell it could just legitimately be even plot details, like if they don't want to tell the exact story of Avatar The Last Airbender over again and want to change some of the, the major plot points just so there's a surprise or two, is that okay? Or it might be okay. It might still be a good show, but the creators may be really committed to the original plot points that have to be hit. You know, It just really could be anything. It could. Um, I don't think Brike are prima donna enough to be angry over a different color gi or, or what have you but it's possible sure anything's possible this is like george luke's walking away from a star wars film 
thing created differences, we'd all be like, what do you mean, George? Or let's stay handing the reins over to someone like, I don't know, Kathleen Kennedy as he walks away. We'll 75. collectively put a quarter of the jar. For yeah, that we're at 75 cents, people. Uh, all right, well, let's try to be optimistic and consider the best possible options here. Let's say the show does a good job of telling the story that we want to see, but also gives us what they want to make, whatever that ephemeral idea might be. If that's the case, and they create original stories within the Avatar The Last Airbender universe, what kind of stories would you want to see? Um, I know Jace hates prequels, and um, I, I, can, I can typically appreciate that um, and share that. I think, though, that that's born, at least in me, of just being inundated with prequels over the last, I don't know, decade or so. It just seems to be um, the cool thing to do. Everybody's putting in a prequel. However, I'd really like to see a prequel to, uh, to Aang uh, being thought out. Uh, I'd like to see what led up to the state that the world is in when, when Aang has to come through and try and reunite um, the, the, you know, the, the different elemental um, nations and overthrow the yoke of the Fire Nation. Like, how, how did that come to be? What characters were involved? What heroic stories are to be told about? Um, some of the defenses of the, the Fire Nation's attacks, even internally, like, were there Fire Nation members who um, were against the war? Like, I think those would be really compelling stories to pursue. I'd be, I'd be keen to watch that. I can get on board with prequels if they go back far enough. For instance, let's make even dollar and talk about the High Republic that don't touch any of the characters that we know, that don't touch any of the the narratives that we're familiar with. Like, for instance, if we went back and told the story of the first Avatar, like, where did it all be? Who, who was the first Avatar ever born? And they was did it just... tell us that story. When did they tell us that? In Korra. Well, I didn't watch Korra. <laughs> Nobody watched Korra. But I'm saying if we had a series about it, I, if, or if, if that was a tale of, you know, was actually the... The, the long standing whatever like seven seasons or whatever give me the give me the full run of the first avatar i'm actually just start just as another aside i am watching Korra right now i am on episode four of season one i could season not, one is good. i couldn't get into it and i've i've heard a lot of the season one is not one of their best um but but get through it and get to season two is that accurate that's like the reverse of what I would have told you. Oh no. Uh, Sil 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 agrees. Season you two can, is the worst. Yeah, you can find two. <laughs> um, okay, so we want a series about the Cabbage Man, is what I've gotten so far. Uh, the and... Cabbage Man. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Yeah, I, season three and four. That I, that actually is, I think, what I've heard. So so corrected. It, it's not season two that I've been told to power through two. It it is season three. Yes. Um, so yes, yeah, so we want a series about the Cabbage Man, and we want one about the Fire Nation attacking. Got it. Uh, or we can pass those recommendations on up the chain to uh, pretend that we have any control whatsoever over what this live action will be. What we do have control over is that we will likely talk about it again, whether it was good or bad. Which means that we're all doomed to watch it, so thanks for that. It's tea time. For this week's tea time, I need you to work your creative muscles. So we talked a little bit before about like, you know, what kind of what kind of bender would you be or like uh, in our various discussions about superpowers. But if you were a superhero, what would your name be? Bonus points if you have a catchphrase. Jay seemed excited. I guess I don't want to go before you. Okay, so no, it's because it's it's almost borderline embarrassing because I've actually thought this through. And so the, here's the deal. There is a, a um, an online, there used to be an online game called City of Heroes. There was also an online game called Champions Online, which I believe is still going. And I had this superhero that I developed over many, many years that was pretty much a Mary Sue, you know, of, of what I would 
I wouldn't say wannabe necessarily. However, it was like this power set that I thought was the coolest power set ever. His his name was Solar Oracle, and he channeled the um, sunlight into uh, like photonic bursts and also healing blasts because I like to play a support character. Um, so that's it. Solar Oracle is that is Jay Drazen's alter ego. Okay, but like that's a cool uh, name though. Yeah, I thought it was going to be something filthy. That, no, that, I take my nice. superhero <laughs> very seriously. <laughs> okay, but did it? But does he have a catchphrase? Does Solar Oracle have a catchphrase? Well, he was gay, like I am, but um, he was. So his backstory was actually that you know the the dalliances of the gods are well known. Um, sorry about the bleep earlier the dalliance of the gods are well known so he was like the son of apollo so the solar part too but he was also the son of the most recent oracle of delphi which are secretly still going by the by um so i didn't i don't remember that he had a catchphrase necessarily but if he did it would be something along the lines of catch some rays <laughs> great <laughs> i love it <laughs> uh, um Let's see. Uh, so, I also played City of Heroes. I had a I had a character that I thought <laughs> I went with an edgy one uh, that I thought was super cool. But it's not a superpower I think I'd want IRL. Um, if I had superpowers IRL, I don't know. I I really like having some kind of mental power, um, something like Professor X um, of of the X Men, like. The ability to project thoughts, the ability to read thoughts, the ability to even, um, you know, like make someone see something that isn't there. Like that kind of stuff really appeals to me. Uh, and in fact, I tend to play that kind of character in most games I play. If there's an illusionist kind of mage, that, that tends to be the kind of class I prefer. Um, <laughs> as far as as far as like a superhero name i'm terrible at that and i find if i'm left to my own devices it's just usually something super basic like i'd be the brain or i'd be like <laughs> like mind man or something like something like gray <laughs> um but a hilarious catchphrase that i don't know why it tickles me um and the truth is it's another superhero's catchphrase um, but I like it so much, I never connected it with this superhero initially. Um, it was actually one of the Austin Powers movies. Um, Foxy Cleopatra punches a dude and she says, she says, Shazam, when she does it. <laughs> and I loved it so much <laughs> that I want that to be my catchphrase. <laughs> that I will, I'll like project something to someone and they'll be like, oh, I see it now. Or like, oh, I... I have a completely different perspective on this and i'll be like shazam <laughs> and, then, and then i'll walk away with things exploding behind me <laughs> i had a mental hero i think that was in chambers online but he was i made him be in grayscale and he was a like a mentalist but i called his his superhero name was gray matter <laughs> oh yeah see that's too clever for i think i'd like <laughs> i just like it's got to be simple t <sighs> All right. Um, so, given my history with games, uh, I don't think that I should necessarily be allowed to choose my own hero name. Nor do I think I would actually manage to do it. Right. So, like, if I if I were to become a, a hero, right, we'll go ahead and say that I'd be based something around healing powers because that's usually what I do. We're all paladins, okay? We know what this is. Um, we do have a type, don't we? <laughs> Uh, it's one of the episodes of last season is actually named We're All Paladins Here. Yep. Um, so I would go in to whatever situations were necessary, whatever, and I'd like, I'd be ready for the media. I'd know it was going to happen. You know, someone's going to come up to you, shove a microphone in your face. What's your name? And I would flub the landing so badly. I would wind up stuck with whatever the media wanted to call me. But what would you want it be? Like, I get the, what just, would be the reality, but just something simple, right? Like, and probably just she'd probably just 
I say she as in like this other like alternative me, whatever. Um, it would just be like, just call me medic or something like that. Like it'd be very short and simple. But then it would wind up getting flubbed somehow or like she'd be distracted trying to like get someone to a medical facility or a hospital or something. And so she'd be like, TikTok, we gotta go. Like this guy's running out of time. And people would be like, ah, yes, the hero TikTok. <laughs> yeah. That, that I can see that. I would be stuck forever. <laughs> if if Sogan had a superhero guild, my my cussing, I can't I can't say any sentences because I'm just a bleep magnet. If we had one, I would be in it. That's all I was gonna say. <laughs> all right. Well, if you would like to submit a tea time question, head on over to SokinGaming.com forward slash Sokin Media and find the submission bar on the right hand side of the page. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the season premiere of the Sokin Podcast. For more Sokin Media, visit us at SokinGaming.com slash Sokin Media, follow our Twitter at Sokin Gaming, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sokin Gaming Community, and look for future episodes of the podcast on Google Podcasts and iTunes. Until next time, I've been T. I'm always Chase. I think I'm always Leo. Sometimes I'm Mind Man. <laughs> And we'll see you next week. Stay classy, Sokin. Thank you for listening to the Sokin Community Podcast. Craving more? Visit us on Twitter and YouTube at Sokin Gaming, as well as our website, www.sokingaming.com. Until next time, stay classy. Right, Jace?